Hey guys, it's Sam and this is my spoilery gush for Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. As I said, this video will have spoilers in it, so if you haven't read this book, I will link my spoiler free review on the screen. And also, I have not read the final book yet, so please, even though I'm talking and hypothesizing about stuff, do not give me any kind of hints. You guys know how I feel. Do not give me any kind of hints to like the final book. I know it's been out for a while. Please do not spoil me. Um, I'm about to read it next month, so I'll talk about it in all of its entirety next month. So, first off, um, kicking off with a bang of having like a little bit of like a prologue and then five-year time jump. I was horrified by like the five-year time jump. It had to happen because obviously like a lot of time had to pass for some of these things to kind of come together but I was still like oh my god. When it said that Nahri's been married to Matindir for like five years I was like oh no. So first let me talk about the fact that we have Dara reincarnated as a full djinn slash ifrit. Um, Wow, and getting his POV was nice. I think that we needed his POV to again see what's happening outside of like David Bot and everything else. But we got to see him as just like the tired war criminal. <laughs> Like, he has done so much bad shit and keeps getting used as a pawn, but also keeps like letting himself be used as a pawn. And I'm interested to see like what's gonna happen with the final book because he's starting to kind of see how like, I don't wanna be this. And you've always turned me into the villain and like, I hate it. Um, so that's really interesting. And also with like Nari's mom um, and how she can be like, she's the next villain. So with this book, with a lot of the like the villains dying in this book, um, we have her being set up as like, it reminded me so much of like um, the Hunger Games, like Snow and Coin, um, and it being like, oh, that's also not a good choice. Um, Cause she's gonna keep doing the exact same thing. Like he's seeing like, oh, so now like, even though he's been very prejudiced um, and like very sort of pro Deva in the past, he's like, we're gonna keep doing the same thing over and over and we're gonna like kill those people and like then it's, it's just gonna be another thing but with us in power and like maybe vengeance isn't the only way to do things so I think that's gonna be interesting. I'm kind of wondering like is Nahri gonna have to like kill her mother? Now she knows she has a family, she knows she has a brother, we don't quite know still who her dad is. There's still a lot of unanswered questions with that and like her family but I'm so like in mm, the fact that like she has like a brother and like the whole time I felt so bad for him because we all know that like he's like you know you find out in the last book that like he obviously had a thing that was like keeping him um it, from like healing but I wasn't quite sure then that that they were related and now like we know I'm just like oh my gosh she has like a whole family. The major focus for this book is obviously just like Dave Abad crumbling and like the continued political strife and upheaval happening between all the groups which again continue to not know like who to pull for because every time that it's like oh the Shafit and then it's like oh they did something awful and then it's like oh I kind of understand where the Deva are coming from ah, they do, like, like there's never anyone that you're like really I can just completely pull for these people um everyone is doing bad shit like all the time so that's always like just a cluster. Mutinder happens to always be just like a brat um I did like towards the end when he was getting a little bit better but how mean he like I get how he's feeling towards Ali and whatever and even when he was being like a little mean towards like Nahri I was like she didn't ask for this um so anytime anyone's ever bratty to her I'm like shut up like anytime that someone called her like the scourge's whore or something I was like I will end you um so yeah but him being like a little bit bratty throughout I was just like oh my god stop because like there were things that happened that like wouldn't have happened if he hadn't been the way he was being so that was really annoying um the dad whose name I'm like forgetting right now Ali's dad their dad um why am I forgetting his name anyway he was awful throughout just like I went from kind of in book one being like okay like he could be sort of fair like he wants to be better whatever and then I was like you are a horrible dictator I hate you almost so much that like his death was like too quick and unsatisfying just the fact that like Kava, you know just like smashed the ring and that was how it happened it was like oh man but then also like you feel a little bit of like yeah that's right you know like it's so tough when like all these bad things are happening and you're like yeah but that guy got what he deserved a little bit like yeah although I kind of wish that like Nafria had a chance to take him out because he was so awful to her. I will say in this book I started to ship Ali and Nafri more. Um I kind of am pulling for them more. So when I first read City of Brass I really was shipping like her and Dara. On reread I was kind of like mmm the vibes here are off and I was liking her and Ali a little bit more and on this I was even like oh I don't know but I don't really know like how she feels. There's a lot of conflicting things happening there and now that like we thought that his brother was gonna die he isn't. Now he's with Dara. Dara's kind of like keeping him alive. Um, he's gonna be used sort of as like a pawn. She hands off the heart to Ali which I was like yes. 
um, I love that because yeah I don't think that like she needed to be in charge or anything but like that that alliance there I think is really good just the all the continued infighting and how like it must suck for the people who were like outside like Kava and like her mom and everybody were plotting this for years and then it all like kind of didn't work out the way they wanted it to yikes um, but now her and him are gonna be like they're in Egypt He's like suffering because he can't be out of David Bob the way that he is with the seal. Um, but she's back home, has a chance to sort of like live a normal life, she thinks, but she's obviously gonna get pulled back in. His mom was exiled, so like they're gonna have to probably work with them again. All the stuff. The siblings were sort of like trying to work together. What is gonna happen? I don't know. That's the thing, I don't know. But I am excited to continue this. Again, I'm so glad that I reread the first book and then got into this, like, and I'm fully immersed in it. Uh, really looking forward to the finale, which I plan to read in March. So um, I will definitely have a video talking about the whole series. Um, very much looking forward to it. And yeah, like, I'm just, I'm curious how all the stuff of like the Mara is gonna turn out. Obviously, I think the Perrys are gonna come back around because like, they're the only ones that we haven't heard a ton from, but they always were going after Dara. So it's kind of like, what's going on with that? Um, is Dara gonna get like a, a little bit of a redemption thing going on what's gonna happen like him and like not we don't know we don't know so yeah looking forward to all of this again 4.5 out of 5 stars not quite a 5 star for me because it was a little bit slow um with the beginning uh I enjoyed all the stuff with like the hospital and everything um but yeah just kind of like interested to see how they try to all bring this together like can these broken bonds be reformed can all of this hate between groups be overcome i don't know interested to see so comment below let me know what you thought of the kingdom of copper again no spoilers or even slight hints for empire of gold please don't do that to me thank you all for watching and i'll see all of you guys soon bye